who loves you more than me and who gave you all that he had all that he had and who can make you laugh and smile like that it's the weekly feed Kyle Meredith I'm sitting with the one and only Matthew Ryan here in the legendary Terminal 5 in New York City how's it going sir good good man it's good to see you how are you I'm, I'm doing all right good. enjoying your new music you've got a new record in the desk of everything yeah uh, kind of a one, two, three punch you've been doing here, year after year after year. Yeah. It really is like an album a year, right? Yeah, 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 well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sounding yeah. good. It's uh, funny because people seem to like you know it is something that comes up that like you know it makes a lot of music. It's only ten, twelve songs a year, right. you know. Um, that's what you do if you're creative. You, you're creative, so and it's how I make a living. So I like to be on, on a you know. Rhythm. Uh, I want to talk about this new record in the dusk of everything. Um, the very first line, I can't bear the thought of ever going back. That that's the first words we hear out of your mouth on this record. Yeah. Which I, you know, if it's sequenced like that on purpose, says so much because you know, uh, maybe because you did write them all around the same time. Yeah. But there is a kind of a loose theme that you've been talking about with these records yeah. uh, through the, through all three of them. Yeah. It, does it, it, is there a theme, and does that line right there start to spell out the next step for for you? That's an interesting thought. I think I, I, that's beautiful, Kyle. I hadn't thought about that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. I bet you, yes, I, I would say probably. Um, that, that song, um, there is a theme. Like yeah. the, the long and the short of it is that life is beautiful, but life is hard and life challenges you mm -hmm. in fundamental ways. I had an event a few years ago mm -hmm. that shook me in a way that, you know, um, you're fortunate if you get to live through it, you sure. know, and um, it's personal, but it, 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 it's, and I say this all the time, and I, I don't mean it uh, as a shtick or something that you say, it is a personal thing that happened, and if I talk about that, these records become about me, but I believe that, uh, you know, as human beings, you know, there's only so many things we, we go through, and uh, where, where the, where the, where the specifics are is how we navigate them, and that's what you know makes up our lives. But there's only a handful of things we go through as humans, and so I think that it's important as an artist to write about those events as, as honestly as we can, you know. And so this record is kind of the uh, some degree of having come to some conclusion about that event and sure. what it meant, and, and and the way that it kind of. Uh, uh, you know, like like when a rock hits a windshield and the glass right. uh, cracks all. You know, um, well, that, that's a great thing though because a lot of artists are afraid of writing about specifics. You know, the idea is, oh, we need to make this universal, and what you usually get out of that is, you know, bland cake or or whatever. That, and, right, you know, right. No, yeah. I mean, I think that's the difference between you know, like art and and you know, pop music. Pop music can speak to everybody in a very, um, very kind of uh, scientific way. Mm -hmm. But see, I believe what I'm doing is as universal as, um, you know, whatever Charge the Hill anthem, you know, sure. pop anthem you want to talk about. I think that, you know, inside the interior of people, uh, if you write about that, I think you are writing about uh, the universal experience. Yeah. And I think there's beauty and I think there's, you know, uh, empowerment in that. It's not always easy. It's not always hallmark, you know, but it's... Uh, I don't know. It's. I'd rather cut to the chase. I, I. I don't like small talk in my life, and I don't like small talk in music. You know. Yeah. Well, it's actually refreshing. <laughs> uh, the, it goes on too, and the, the very last song you close it out with uh, "Let's Wave Goodbye." Yeah. Which is a. I mean, in title alone is is a is a closure. Yeah. So now we do have a complete theme of of what are all of the things you're talking mm -hmm. about here. Do you, do you, you know, I was talking to Amy Mann one time and she was talking about she loves the challenge of, of having a theme, like writing in, in, you know, that kind of like, it doesn't have to be a storyline, but it is a challenge. Do you look yeah. for challenges when you're writing? Because you've been at this now for a while, you know, and so to make a record after a record, you know, and to try to keep it interesting, to do it differently, do you have to find yourself challenged? No, I just have to find myself moved. 
And if I feel moved, if I feel compelled to follow an idea, then I follow it. And I, for better or for worse, that's all that motivates me. And my career has had a lot of ups and downs. And it's, it's you know, but you accept those with the weight of your work. And if you felt compelled to do something, you felt compelled to follow it through. If it means something to you, it's going to mean something to somebody. And at the end of the day, that can't be measured in cash or, or anything like that. And so that's what I'm motivated by, you know, it's all I care about. I don't, I don't ever write for any other reason. Sure. And whenever I have, it's been the most miserable I've ever been. Right. You really? know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So it's, uh, it, it does take a pretty, uh, dark's not the right word, but a pretty rough look on relationships within the dusk of everything. Um, and, and that whole kind of uh, analyzing relationships over the three records. Did you come out of this learning anything about relationships in general that maybe you didn't know about before? Like See, I don't, the therapy of songwriting, I guess? Well, I don't look at it as rough. I look at it as honest. You know, I think that we all kind of go into things with the best of intentions and sure. we betray ourselves and we be betray each other. We do it in small ways, we do it in big ways. It's what we do as humans. And you can hold yourself accountable in, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, with, with, with some sort of cruelty that we're capable of, or you can accept that we are on some level duality. We are capable of beauty, we're capable of mm -hmm. ugliness. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at it as rough, I look at it as, as honest, you know. I think to earn, to having been through a war and still be able to look at somebody and love them is about as heroic as it gets. And that's what I'm writing about, essentially. You know, and it, there's a lot of metaphor and it's, it, it's not about one person, but, um, but it's, it's really not rough. And I'm not responding like no, in a way of like, like, I understand. It's like a warts and all is what I'm getting to. You well, know, yeah. That's, that, that's kind of it because. It's not miserable though. It's, it's not love me do. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, it's not, it's not. But that's pop music, sure, and the Beatles sure, are great. Sure. But Famous Blue Raincoat mm -hmm. is a pop song mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, thanks for the trouble you took for, uh, from her eyes. I thought it was there for good, so I never tried. I know that guy. <laughs> uh, I'm sure easier. you do too. Yeah, right, right, that's you know? I think it's important that there be music that, that is honest with people. Yeah. I understand the need for like the best possible version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I get that. Like, I liked it to Die Hard movies as a kid as well, <laughs> you know? But I've always found that the more human I was, the happier I was. Mm -hmm. And the more I understood that I was, in fact, um, conflict. Mm -hmm. I myself am conflict. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong, but of all the people I know and love and all the people that, you know, I've come in contact and, you know, been intimate with, mm -hmm. everybody I've known has been in conflict yeah. with themselves what they want, what they think the world is, what the world actually is, and trying to define what is what it is. And there's a lot of work we do as humans that we kind of take for granted, mm -hmm. um, just in our, our, our moving uh, through our lives. You it's know? kind of interesting, because the way you say that with I am conflict, it it's, it's almost has a, even a religious tinge to it with I am sinner. Right, you know, right, and, right, And realizing right. that and everything. Right, so. I thought about that as I was saying it, because um, yeah. I'm agnostic, mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I'm not an atheist. Um, but there's something to it, sure, you know. Sure. Uh, clearly, yeah. this isn't a new conversation, this is it? It's not a new conversation. <laughs> but you say it so well, and, and, and it is one thing that a lot of people can't articulate, you know. And when you talk about all this stuff, it almost sounds like it always comes down to communication. Yeah. You know, with, with all these problems, it usually just boils down to bad communication a lot of the time. I think I had. I'm, I'm speaking directly about why I opened up and talked more about mm -hmm. this over the years, is that I got tired of hearing that my work was a bummer or that my work was dark or sure, my sure, work sure. was sad mm -hmm. and so I had to even within my own uh, travels you know come to some place where I understood why I was doing what I was doing right um, yeah a lot of times in relationships it's communication that breaks it up uh, it's it's dishonesty about what dishonesty about what your desires are but you see there's a bigger metaphor here it's not just about men and women or men and men, or women and women. It's also about how we act as a collective. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see the same plot lines playing out on a much wider scale in the more macro. And there's something about human behavior that I think we have to be very conscious of our ability to lean for beauty and our ability to lean back to catastrophe. And it is that is why I'm doing 
my work and I'm not trying to make it more important or take what you're saying mm -hmm. further but just like just more and more I felt like I had to state my case of why I'm doing this because I'm so tired yeah. of hearing that it's this you know sure sure and I, I and no I, one likes to be pegged and I also feel you know protective of a lot of music like Cohen not that he needs my protection but he gets that a lot yeah. and I think it's important that people listen to Cohen I think it's important people listen to Nick Drake I also think it's important that people listen to KC and the Sunshine Band, you know? But I think there's a time for KC and the sure. Sunshine Band, and there's a time for, you know, blood on the trash. Sure, sure. You know? Well, uh, you can undersell yourself. I think what you are doing is important. I think the music that you're doing is important. Once again, In the Dusk of Everything is a beautiful record. Thank you. Uh, call it dark or not, but it is beautiful. <laughs> uh, it is. And I'm really looking forward to the next thing. I mean, you got your eye on what the next thing is? Yeah, it's already done. It, it's a, it's, you. it's a um, it's a big rock and roll record. Oh, yeah. I'll be uh, curious to hear it, man. Yeah. We can't wait. Yeah. All we'll have to do is wait another year, right? Probably about six months. <laughs> All right, Matthew Ryan. <laughs> Thank so you.